The Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Rob McConnell's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Exxon Radio Show or endorsed in any manner by Rob McConnell, Relmar McConnell Media Company, the Exxon Broadcast Network, its affiliated networks, stations, employees, or advertisers. All hit Welcome to the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. And welcome back to the Exxon, everyone. I am Rob McConnell, and for the next four hours, I'm your host and your guide as together we cross the time-space continuum to this place that I call the Exxon. It's a place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. It's a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. And the Exxon comes to you Monday through Friday from 10 p.m. Eastern until 2 a.m. Eastern right here on the Exxon Broadcast Network, Talkstar Radio Network, Mutual Broadcast Network, iHeartRadio, Simul Radio and Simul TV. Now, if you'd like to uh, send us an email, exxon at exxonradiotv.com is our address. And uh, to find out about the programming on the Exxon Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. And for the Exxon TV channel on Simul TV, www.simultv.com. Exxon Nation, my guest this hour is Jack Kenna. He is considered to many to be one of the top paranormal investigators in New England. He is a member of the Spirits of New England team, San Diego Ghost Hunters, and Extreme Paranormal Encounter Response team. Some of his accomplishments include paranormal research investigator and technical specialist with over 10,000 hours of case time, helping his team conduct investigations, review evidence, and assist in helping those who are experiencing hauntings to bring them to a positive resolution. Joining me now from somewhere on the East Coast, is Jack Kenna. And Jack, welcome to the Exxon. Hey, Rob. Thank you very much. I appreciate you having me on the show. Well, it's great having you with us, Jack. Uh, what inspired you to get involved in investigating the paranormal? Uh, I guess really, uh, yeah, my mother had had experiences all her life. And she used to tell me about them. We'd talk about them. Mm-hmm. And I'd had some myself when I was a younger kid. So I kind of always been kind of leaning that way towards it. And then... Um, uh, yeah, we used to go as kids, do the typical things, go in the, the supposedly haunted cemeteries and all that stuff. But I always loved the shows, too, all the different shows that were on TV in search of and all that. Sure. So after a certain show came on TV, uh, I got to meet a bunch of people online through one of their uh, online uh, chat networks yeah. and uh, ended up becoming a, a member of Spirits of New England. And we've been... Uh, doing investigations uh, since 2009, I mean, on a full-bore basis, so uh, helping people out and just trying to help them figure out what it really is going on. Um, you know, it was keeping it reserved. Is it really a haunting going on or is mm-hmm. it something else? So just trying to help people figure out what's really happening and, and what's going on. So, yeah, that's kind of how I got into it, just my own experiences. You you mentioned that as a child you, uh, like most kids, went to, uh, to these uh, – graveyards that were supposed to be haunted but in reality <laughs> how haunted are graveyards I, I yeah i still don't believe there i mean there's 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 ones that have some things mm-hmm. going on that i think for the most part i try to stay away from them um just because i i know i wouldn't want to hang out at my uh, own grave to be honest with you i don't think i'd like to hang out there <laughs> so, so i don't i don't know how, i mean some people believe they're haunted with more negative type of things demonic type entities or things like that and i suppose that's possible uh I only have run into one case, uh, which was involved with a case, mm-hmm. that we had a, uh, a haunting involved with uh, a local pauper cemetery. Oh, yeah. Which are all unmarked graves. Um, and uh, that was 
connected to the client and what they were experiencing. That was in Springfield, Massachusetts. Uh, and the, the cemetery is called Bay Pass Cemetery. But I think that was an unusual case. Um, again, it's an unmarked cemetery to drive by. You wouldn't even know it's a cemetery, um, unless except for the sign they finally put up. Sure. And it just looks like an empty yard. So there's no headstones. There's no nothing. So uh, I think in unmarked graves, places like that, you could potentially have some hauntings because those people necessarily aren't at rest. Yeah, why hang around a cemetery where you can actually go and have a lot more fun at a pub or a hotel, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. I, yeah, yeah, I'd haunt a pub, firstly. <laughs> do you, do you, let me ask that. you something. I've been asking this to, to members of ghost teams, and and it's a question that boggles them. Has anyone ever heard of a haunted strip bar? Uh, actually, I, I, I have, <laughs> I haven't investigated it. Uh-huh, leave it but to I, you, Jack, leave it I, to you. I, no, 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 I, I, I heard about it from some uh-huh. of my friends locally here that there was one in Albany that uh, had some activity going on. It wasn't always a strip club, though. Um, it was over <laughs> in uh, Schenectady, New York. Right. Um, and uh, it, I forget what it was before... But uh, they, ha- they they felt it really had to do with what it was previously, not the the current strip club that it is. Um, but yes, there, there, I, I, there, I have heard of one, but not because of what was currently going on there. Um, although if you think about it, I mean, there has been, I mean, I know watching the news and stuff like that, there's been some pretty tragic events that can happen at some of those places sure are, uh, yeah. just because of what can go on there at some of them. That's you know? right. That's right. Um what has been your most memorable paranormal investigation that you've done over the years, Jack? Uh, I, w- I would have to say the most memorable is, has been the USS Constitution for the Navy um, out in Charlestown, Massachusetts. And not just because of the ship itself. You can get, get to investigate good old, uh, old iron sides out there, um, which is the oldest functioning naval ship ship in the United States Navy. It's still, it's a wooden warship built in the 1780 something, um, 1789, I think. Um, but it's, it's what we captured there and the evidence we captured there, um, of a young boy who's still on that ship and they employed young boys in the 1800s as crew members. That's what their designation was, was a boy. And we captured his voice several times. We captured a really good EVP from him. Um, that talks to life after death, I, I believe, because he refers to this black bear cub that was on the ship in the 1930s. But this was a young individual who died in the 1800s. So how does he know about a black bear from 1932 if yeah. he died in the 1800s? So that's why I like that EVP. He's he's two couple things. He's helping to give the tour, mm-hmm. which is what was going on kind of at the time. Right. And and it was a private tour for us on the, uh, investigating the second night. And he talks about something that he shouldn't really know about. He talks about this black bear. That was so, on the ship. So based on your expertise as, as a paranormal researcher, why is it that some spirits stay behind and others go to wherever they go? Yeah, that's a question I get a lot. I don't know if we really totally have answers to We have theories. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, and my own personal theories on that is uh, one of three reasons. Either uh, they were a miserable SOB when they were alive, and yeah. they may not have believed in heaven or hell, but they knew about it, and it's like, I'm staying here. I ain't going nowhere. <laughs> I'll go to the bad place, right? Um, at least that's maybe what they believe. Or somebody either uh, uh, really liked the location so much it's kind of their piece of heaven they don't want to leave it uh or they're not aware they're dead i mean those are my three potential theories on on why they're still around how can somebody know that they're not dead how do they know that how not know that they're dead exactly Um, and that's i think it's uh if it happens so quickly that you don't even know what happened to you I think that's potentially something where maybe maybe you just don't want to accept the fact that you're dead. Maybe it's not so much that you don't know you're dead, mm-hmm. but you don't want to accept the fact that you've you, you've di- just died. Um, and, and maybe that's a better way of putting it, accepting that fact. Um, so I think that's that can be part of it. I mean, I, I know of a case where an individual was uh, hit by a car, killed instantly. And we ran into his spirit almost a year later. 
um, at doing another investigation. We did come across him, and all the evidence added up to his accident. Every time I, I put in certain information to, to do some research in Google, his accident kept coming up, and it led me to that, and I went back to that location and and made contact with him. Hmm. And, and actually, I think I believe, did make contact with this individual, and hopefully they've since crossed on. I don't know. I just tried to talk to them about, you know, this is what happened to you. You need to be aware. And, you know, you don't need to be here anymore. I, did it work? I don't know. But I hope it did. Well, have you had contact with him since? Mm, no, but I haven't been there back oh, there okay. since either. So I can't can't say to, to, to that. Um, but I just hope that mm-hmm. he had moved on. All right, Jack, stand by. You and I have to take our first break. Exxon Nation, Jack Ken is our special guest this hour. And if you'd like to find out more about Jack and his exploits and what he's been up to and what he's going to be doing, visit his website, www.spiritsofnewengland.org. That's spiritsofnewengland.org. This is the Exxon. I am Rob McConnell. We're coming to you from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Now, if you'd like to get the current edition of the X Chronicles newspaper, there's two ways you can do it. You can either go online to xchroniclesnewspaper.com and download it with our compliments or read it online with our compliments. Or you can go to amazon.com and buy it in the paperback format. Or Kindle. It's up to you. Personally, I'd take the for free offer because there's no catches whatsoever. It's our way of saying thank you to you for being part of the XO Nation. Jack, Ken, and I return on the other side of this break as we continue investigating the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology here in the XO with yours truly, Rob McConnell. Don't go away. Whether you're a skeptic or a believer, join me, Rob McConnell, as together we'll investigate the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology here on the Exxon Radio TV show on XZBN and the Exxon TV channel on Simul TV. Since 1990, the Exxon Radio TV show has been the place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. Together, we'll investigate UFOs, aliens, ghosts, Bigfoot, Psychic phenomena, lake monsters, conspiracy theories, government cover-ups, the truth embargo, alien abductions, ESP, haunted locations from around the world, and so much more. With over 28 years of broadcasting and more than 4,500 individual guests, the X-Zone is truly a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality, as evidenced by the credibility, integrity, and professionalism of the guests that we bring to our international audience. If you have seen a UFO, had a close encounter, seen a ghost, Bigfoot, lake monster, or a story that you would like to share or have investigated, contact me, Rob McConnell, by sending me your email to xzone at xzoneradiotv.com or you can call toll-free 1-800-610-7035, extension 143, and on Skype, Exxon Radio TV. For more information on the Exxon Radio TV show with yours truly, Rob McConnell, visit www.exxoneradiotv.com or www.exxonetvchannel.com or simultv.com and xzbn.net. Until next we meet here in the X-Zone from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Always remember X-Zone Nation. Keep your eyes to the sky and your heart in the light. You have heard of the X-Zone? Now watch it on Simul TV. Plus 500 video games, live TV channels, free video on demand worldwide and more does this sound like tomorrow's television well it is but you can have it today right now it is simul tv simul tv offers what the others only wish they could provide 15 exclusive channels like exxon sci-fi and horror we are worldwide no other provider offers that 500 built-in video games no need to have an extra expensive system we have them included free video on demand Live streaming events from around the world. 
interactive online network, and much more. Tomorrow's TV today. Simul TV. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. You can have Simul TV today. Sign up at simultv.com. Do it today. And welcome back. Jack Ken is our special guest this hour, www.spiritsofnewengland.org. Uh, Jack, how would you best describe what a ghost is, and is there a difference between a ghost and a spirit? Oh, that's a, that's a good question. Um, I actually don't believe there's there's a difference between a ghost and a spirit. Personally, I mean, I, it's just, I think, terminology. I prefer yeah. spirit. Um some people call them like to call them ghosts. Uh, I have heard people say, give a reason for a difference between the two. Like, oh, well, one is this, or one is you know, a, a ghost is more like uh, something that's a shadow figure, or this or that. But I, I don't know. I, I, spirits are spirits. We're talking about a human soul, right? Yeah. Uh, unless you're talking about something demonic, which has never been human, never was, or even an elemental spirit. Again, something that's never been human. Um, but spirits, we're talking about the human soul. So, I mean, that's that's my perspective on it. Um, and I don't think there really is a difference between the, the, those two terms. Now, Jack, you, you mentioned shadow figures. And this is a, a phrase that we're hearing a lot more of these days than at any time over the past 29 years of me doing this show. What is going <laughs> on with that? I, I don't know. I, I, uh, I mean, since I've been really doing... Hardcore invest I guess you call it hardcore investigating. Um, I've seen shadow figures. Uh, then there's people who call things shadow people. Uh, I don't. I don't know if there's too much of a difference between the two. Um, a figure is something that looks human mm-hmm. to me. Um, there's mists. There's these dark mists I've seen at different times. So there's all these different things. Why are we talking more about them? Maybe it's just because people are more openly talking about it. Um, uh, and and we have so many people out there doing investigations and things like that. They either believe they're seeing shadow figures or they're mistaking things for shadow figures. Um, you know, and just me personally, I can't say I see them that often on investigations. Right. It's rare. Um, I'd say, you know, if I've seen one in, in 20 investigations, uh, uh, that's a lot. Um yeah, I don't know. I can't, I, can't, I think people sometimes see what they want to see, too. Does, does the amount of airplay that the paranormal is getting these days have anything to do with it? Uh, it very well could. I mean, again, people, people see these shows, mm-hmm. they watch them on TV, they want to have an experience. So they see something in their home or when they're out at uh, a location, they think, oh, I just saw a shadow figure because it's, it's, it's exciting to say you saw that or it's exciting to think you saw that, right. right? So it could have something to do with it. I mean, yeah, the TV could definitely have something to do with it. Well, based on what we were just talking about, the effect of the media on claims of the paranormal, what percentage of paranormal claims do you give because of the media's influence? Uh, that's, that's a tough one to say. I mean, because when we do investigations, mm-hmm. we have an 11-page form we send to people to fill out before we really start talking to them about what's going on in their home or, or their business. So they have to give us a lot of information first. So those cases, usually when we get that form back, I get, if somebody really wants our help, I get it back in a few minutes. And in almost all those cases, there is something going on. But I think that's because these people you know, are desperate. They've also got some really crazy things going on mm-hmm. in their life that they haven't dealt with. And I think energy, you know, energy is drawn to that. But um, just to try to say what is paranormal or what isn't paranormal based on the TV. I don't know if you can do that. I don't know if you can make that determination unless you're I, I don't know, unless you're really looking at it. There is a lot of people who contact me telling me their home is haunted mm-hmm. because they see me on TV. 
Um, and usually I'll start asking a few questions and it's like, oh, well, no, uh, we never don't really need help with it and we're not really afraid of it. And then it's like, okay, so, you know, I just take it for what it is. You know, I, I, I don't assume that their home is haunted. I don't assume it's not. Um, they may feel it is. And a lot of the things they describe to you are things they've seen on TV. So I, I got no way of disseminating. You know what I'm saying? I guess it's no just like I guess it's just like the little boys who want to uh, get a six uh, a six shooter, wear a cowboy hat and little spurs because he saw it on a western show. Well, maybe, yeah, maybe. I mean, that that could be part of it. Um, some people just open up after years of not talking about it either, um, and they really have had experiences. Mm -hmm. And those you can sometimes tell because of the detail they give you. It's not just, oh, we saw a shadow figure. We saw the. Sometimes you'll hear something from somebody that, well, you know, I used to see this this red eyes looking at me from my uh, my closet in my bedroom when I was a kid. Now I, I've seen that, and I don't hear that very often, but I have seen that, and and, and not seen it, but I have heard of that mm -hmm. with other investigations that actually have something real going on yeah and it's usually something negative so so sometimes you'll get something from people that they just haven't talked about it but the shows have made them want to f or feel more comfortable to talk about it finally yeah. after I, I, I used to have the phenomenon of having a red eyes looking at me from my closet when i was a kid too just to find out it was my uncle mac who was so drunk he thought my closet was the washroom <laughs> <laughs> that could be the case too. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I have had some where it's like that wasn't the only thing either. I mean, they sure. they had these red eyes and mm -hmm. they they describe this thing and and then they have other strange things happen. And they're, the funny thing is, they're still having strange things happen in their life now. And those are some of the people that fill out this eleven page form for us. So uh, not all of them, but some of them. Um, but I know a good friend of mine, uh, Katie Boyd, who's a demonologist, who had that happen to her when she was younger, and that's kind of what led her on her path to doing what she does now, you know, um, with all the demonology stuff. And she had some very frightening experiences as a child uh, and a teenager throughout her time that she lived in the house, all the way up until the time she left the house. So. You know, there is some people who are telling you truths. There are some people who just, oh, we had this happen, we had this happen. And it's exciting, right? It's exciting. Mm -hmm. So um, trying to disseminate that, though, can be very difficult sometimes. Why would somebody go to a lay person who claims to be a demonologist for help instead of going to a member of the clergy? Um, some people don't want to go to their clergy right away, I have found out. They're, mm -hmm. like, they're like afraid they're... They're going to be looked at strangely by them. Um, so they'd rather go to somebody else first, a paranormal team or a demonologist, mm -hmm. who ultimately will point them back to their church anyway. Um, at least, you know, anybody who's, who's, who knows anything, usually in the end you'll, you'll try to connect those people back to their faith to search help sure. there, if it's something real that's going on. Um, but uh, I think they're just, based on my own experiences, they're afraid their their priest or their minister or their whoever is going to look at them and go, okay, yeah, fine, you're, you're just crazy. But they really won't. They actually won't. They actually will sit and they'll listen to you and they'll try to help you out. With all the well, – what is, what is the main focus or what is the main – uh, priority of a paranormal investigators. Why do they do what they do? Um, uh, everybody has their own reasonings. I mean, for for myself and our team, we just want to try to help people who are experiencing things they can't understand or they don't understand, and try to sort out what is possibly paranormal from what really isn't. Because once somebody's experienced, if they are experiencing what they believe is a haunting, mm -hmm. all of a sudden everything is paranormal. No matter what it is, glass falls off the table. Oh, oh, a ghost did that. Well, probably not. <laughs> so we we try to help them with that. Other paranormal investigators really want to get into it to try to prove the existence of the afterlife. Um, I know groups that, that focus mostly on that. They want to somehow, hopefully someday, prove to people that there is life after death. Um, I don't focus on that. I, I just have that belief myself. All right, but um, let, let's say let's say that some group somewhere, some yeah. place in the future, 
just happens to prove there is life after death? What happens to the rest of the researchers out there? Do they just cease and desist and say, okay, well, this is over. Let's find something else to do. No, oh, no, we proved we can go to the moon. Do we stop going after uh, space? I mean, you know. Did, I, uh, but did we go <laughs> to the moon? I know, I know you by that. Hey, but I, I uh-huh. don't have our own beliefs. <laughs> but my point is, all right, if, let's say airplanes, okay. okay? We created the airplane, okay? Did that stop us from looking at better ways to improve it? Well, no, but, but no. what it did, you're right. We did improve on it, but you can't improve on life after death. Uh, you can maybe improve on the... The, trying to connect with the with the other side, um, trying True. to find a better way to communicate with it and talk with it. So I don't think just because if somebody ever did prove mm-hmm. that it exists, I don't think that would end the what's going on. No, I, I don't think that would put an end to the paranormal teams or people trying to 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 do that. I think somebody else would say, "I can. They did it, but I can do it better." Right? I mean, there's always the next person who could do it better. Um, so I don't think that would stop it. No. All right, Jack, stand by. We've got to take our next break. And Exxon Nation, if you'd like to find out more about Jack Kenna, his website is www.spiritsofnewengland.org. That's www.spiritsofnewengland.org. Jack and I will be back on the other side of this commercial break as we continue investigating the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology here in the Exxon from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. If you'd like to send me an email, it's very simple. Exxon, exxonradiotv.com, and on all social media sites, Exxon Radio TV. This is the Exxon. I am Rob McConnell. Don't go away. studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, to the world and beyond. You're watching the Exxon Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. AVS Media Day. You have heard of the Exxon? Now watch it on Simo TV, plus 500 video games, live TV channels, free video on demand, worldwide and more. Does this sound like tomorrow's television? Well, it is, but you can have it today, right now. It is Simul TV. Simul TV offers what the others only wish they could provide 15 exclusive channels like X Zone, Sci Fi, and Horror. We are worldwide. No other provider offers that. 500 built in video games. No need to have an extra expensive system. We have them included. Free video on demand. Live streaming events from around the world, interactive online network, and much more. Tomorrow's TV today, Simul TV. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. You can have Simul TV today. Sign up at simultv.com. Do it today. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the X-Zone Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere. 24-7-365. 
Rob McConnell here, presenting an overview for Nicholas Paul Jinnick's, author of a fascinating book, Amen. It presents facts revealed by Egyptologists, facts that enable us to understand why Amen is the beginning of creation of God. It provides recommendations for religious leaders of the major religions to unify their beliefs and teach the Word of God, love one another. Amen informs people how mankind conceived God. It was the Egyptians that developed the concepts of a soul, a hereafter, and son of God. And finally, after the worship of many gods, they conceived the belief in one universal God, the maker of all there is. For more information, visit www.futureofgodamen.com. That's www.futureofgodamen.com. Dot com. Jack Kennis, our guest this hour, explanation www.spiritsofnewengland.org. With all the number of paranormal teams that are out there, Jack, all the independent researchers, uh, mm-hmm. all everyone who's out there <clears throat> around the world trying to get the proof of the afterlife, after all these years, how come it hasn't been uh, obtained? It's a good question. I haven't tried to work on it myself either, but <laughs> I'm just a believer. I, I just believe there is an afterlife. But why do you um, believe? But I mean, why believe? Um, uh, I mean, because it's my it's part of my faith. It's part of what I do believe, and it's also I could say I could tell you that I, the things I've seen on investigations and helping people have have helped to solidify my belief, at least for me. I can only talk to you on a personal level for that. I, I can't tell you – I can't prove to you it exists. Sure. So I, I can't make somebody else cons- – but for me, I've seen enough, experienced enough, and I have my own beliefs that I, I just – I believe there's an afterlife. I believe there's more beyond this. Um, why hasn't it been proven? I, I don't know if you ever can. I, to me, it's a more spiritual thing, right? It's 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 a, a spiritual belief. It's a spiritual realm that we're talking about when we talk about the paranormal and and spirits and what I you know like I could talked about before souls. Um, so it's a personal thing. You, you you either have a reason to believe it based on your own personal experiences, or you don't. Um, and that's not to say people. Who don't believe in it or, or wrong. I, I don't know. Yeah. I'll know. I'll tell you when I get there. How's that? Uh, all right. I'll, <laughs> I'll tell you I'll, when I get there. Sure. Uh, you know, but, I mean, you call- I, yeah, I don't know why they haven't proven it yet. I mean, I don't know if you ever will. All right. You called it a paranormal realm. Is it possible that it is not a paranormal realm, but a um, an unknown mental mind realm? Something well, that think- we are manifesting ourselves that has nothing to do with anything else. Because as, as you yourself stated that it's it's a matter of belief and belief is the strongest power in the universe if you believe in something whether right. you know you say it i say it whoever says it they're not going to believe you for example christmas eve how no. many kids believe that santa claus is going to be coming being pulled across the sky by a tiny yeah. reindeer coming yeah. down a chimney that doesn't exist on an apartment building Yep. I, I, even my wife believes Christmas Eve that there's a Santa Claus, you know. So sure, you know. So I mean, how do we know I, that I this is? I don't is disbelieve what we're either. <laughs> I've been a strong believer yeah. all my life. Um, doesn't mean that's exactly what's going on, yeah. but you know. Um, I think I cut you off though, so let me let you finish. No, no, I mean, no. what I, I think I really what I said it's a spiritual realm. I probably did say paranormal realm okay. too, but to me it's a spiritual realm. But right? but even spir- soul, but, so even, but even spirituality. Yeah, is is based on one's own belief. That's right. That's right. That you're absolutely yeah. right. That's why I said also what I said. I can I I, I have my own beliefs mm-hmm. and my own experiences that that feed those beliefs. Right. So I can only speak to my own, you know, view sure. of it. Right. And and I think that's what it is. It's a personal thing. It's 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 
you either have had experiences that, that lead you to believe there is mm-hmm. an afterlife or you haven't had experiences or you've had other experiences that believe you that makes you believe there is not. So, so let me, let me ask you, let me ask you this then. Why is it's it tough? You know? Why is it that when people go on ghost tours, yeah, a percentage of the people will have an experience, a paranormal experience or an encounter yeah. with a paranormal and, Another percentage of the exact same group going in the exact same place as the people who have experienced something experience nothing. Uh, I just had this happen literally two uh, two weeks ago, and I was at I was helping to lead an event Mm -hmm. um, where the group we had half of them heard this disembodied voice, half did not. Interestingly enough, I was in the half that didn't, but yet I'm a believer. So how do I explain that? I don't know. Okay, but half of them heard it, and I and I know some of these people, you know, known them for a while, and yeah. I trust them. But, but the you have people I didn't know, if half this group of thirty people that heard this, and the other half of us didn't, roughly, you know. Um, then I had the same thing happen last year, where I was one of the ones that did hear it, same location, by the way, did hear it, and the other half didn't, and I was one of the ones last year that heard it, but this year I didn't. So I, I don't know. I don't know if it has to do with belief. I don't know how it has to do with being a skeptic because there was some people there who I could tell from the get-go they were there just because their girlfriend was there. And they heard it, though. And they were like, well, what was really that? One of you guys said something. I said, no, we didn't. You know, so they had somebody who really was a non-believer who heard something. Right? So I don't know if it has to do with you being a believer or a non-believer or anything. It's just that energy is there and it's trying to communicate tell me about your book paranormal research paranormal research i it's, it's my newest book uh, came out on june 28th uh it's about uh, my teams and my perspectives on investigating the paranormal techniques we use uh equipment talking about equipment and not getting into the, the nitty-gritty of equipment but really i start to talk about this is what this stuff is designed for. We're trying to use it for this, so how can it really work that way? You know, how can it work to how can a digital recorder work to capture a spirit voice? And I get into well, you know, there's possibilities for this and that, but here's how you want to set these things up to improve your chances. Or here's a little bit of history of it without getting into the technical workings of it too much. I'm trying to keep it at layman's terms, um, but I also talk about if you're going to get into this and you want to build a team and about be team building and and how to pick people for certain tasks on the team not just because hey i'm team founder so i'm going to be the team leader it may be a terrible team leader pick somebody else that's better at that yeah so we talk about that talk about a ton of things uh but it's really trying to help people who really want to get into this learn how to get a good start on investigating with a common sense background to it Right. Okay, so what Using kind of... some common sense when you're doing that. And we also include several of our actual investigations, the real stuff, mm-hmm. what we did, what we we got out of it, and also what it meant to each of our investigators. I interview at least one of our investigators for each one, what it meant to them, what they got out of it, what uh, how it impacted right. them uh, on, a, uh, on their own life. So what kind of person makes the best or the better paranormal investigator? I think mostly somebody that's just really curious about what is out there, what's going on. Um, curious. And somebody who's who has a passion for mm-hmm. it, is dedicated to doing the work that it really takes to find out what is really, you know, is do I have evidence? Evidence review is the roughest thing you could ever do. It's reviewing hours and hours of audio and video, and and you've got to be dedicated to sit there and go through that, and mm-hmm. not just go on the investigation and have a good time and, and go okay, and never listen to anything that you're collected, right? I mean, you've well, yeah. got to go through that stuff if you're trying to do it, either to try to mm-hmm. find evidence of the paranormal or you're trying to do it to help people. Right. Both of those require dedication, and that's really what the book is getting is is for is people have this dedication to this that really want to learn or if you just want to read and really learn what it's about to to really do this and be dedicated to it 
it, it, it's it's a hardcover book. It's kind of like a textbook, but it doesn't read like a textbook. Um, I try to make it fun and informative, and and even for somebody who's never investigated before, they could pick it up, read it, and probably have a good time with the book at least. Anyway, at least learn something from it. You also use something called uh, the Ghost Radar app. I, I, isn't that just I, an app that people use for fun? Um, people ask me that all the time. I've been beat up for it too, <laughs> a little bit, not physically, but oh, you know, I see. Right. Yeah, verbally beat up for it. Uh-huh. Um, but I've been using it, <clears throat> and this is just one app. But mm-hmm. I, and I'll say this about it: I've been using it for over seven years, and I've collected enough evidence. Not just from that, but things that coordinate with that that happened at the same time, catching EVPs along with stuff that's coming through that Ghost Radar app words that are very similar, mm-hmm. have the same meaning, and they connect to the location. Um, but I would say this. I, I, I believe you could use anything to try to communicate to the spirit world with. It's just a matter of explaining to them if there is somebody there explaining it, here's how you can use this. Here's how you can try to interact with it. And I could take a piece of tissue paper and say, hey, there's a piece of tissue paper. You can make that float in the air and communicate me with me for yes. Say yes is making it float in the air. Making it roll across the table is a no. I, I, I could tell them anything, right? I mean, I could use anything. These are no different. And people do pick on me because, well, it says it's entertainment purposes only. Well, if you go to the, some of the top equipment in the field that's mm-hmm. used – Read their website. Everything will tell you entertainment purposes only because nobody can tell you anything can communicate with spirit. Well, because mind, we don't well, even we, – most people will tell you we don't even know if spirit exists. Well, right? mind, so, mind you, Jack, when you go to a paranormal conference, uh, all the tickets have to say for entertainment purposes only because up here in Canada, telling fortunes, doing tarot cards, or psychic yeah. readings is against the law. Yes, you're right. You're right. Yep. You're right. So it is. I mean, it's and, and in some parts of the states, yep. it's against the law still too. So I mean, it's a disclaimer. That, that's what it is. It does yeah, exactly. doesn't mean anything can't communicate mm-hmm. through it. And and again, I've just for five years I used that thing before yep. I ever started presenting anything out of it as evidence. And I collected that data for five years, multiple, numerous, numerous investigations, and was able to see a correlation between stuff I was getting from it. All right, Jack, I hate to do this, but I've got to take my break. Please stand by. Exo Nation, Jack Ken is our special guest this hour. His website is spiritsofnewengland.org. And Jack and I will be back on the other side of this break as we wrap up this hour here in the Exxon from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. My name is Rob McConnell. Don't go away. You have heard of the X Zone? Now watch it on Simo TV, plus 500 video games, live TV channels, free video on demand, worldwide, and more. Does this sound like tomorrow's television? Well, it is, but you can have it today, right now. It is Simul TV. Simul TV offers what the others only wish they could provide. 15 exclusive channels like X Zone, Sci Fi, and Horror. We are worldwide. No other provider offers that. 500 built in video games. No need to have an extra expensive system. We have them included. Free video on demand. Live streaming events from around the world interactive online network, and much more. Tomorrow's TV today, Simul TV. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. You can have Simul TV today. Sign up at simultv.com. Do it today. Whether you're a skeptic or a believer, join me, Rob McConnell, as together we'll investigate the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology here on the Exxon Radio TV show on XZBN and the Exxon TV channel on Simul TV. Since 1990, the Exxon Radio TV show has been the place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. Together, we'll investigate UFOs, aliens, ghosts, Bigfoot, Psychic phenomena, lake monsters, conspiracy theories, government cover-ups, the truth embargo, alien abductions, ESP, haunted locations from around the world, and so much more. 
With over 28 years of broadcasting and more than 4,500 individual guests, The X-Zone is truly a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality, as evidenced by the credibility, integrity, and professionalism of the guests that we bring to our international audience. If you have seen a UFO, had a close encounter, seen a ghost, Bigfoot, lake monster, or a story that you would like to share or have investigated, contact me, Rob McConnell, by sending me your email to xzone at xzoneradiotv.com, or you can call toll-free 1-800-610-7035, extension 143, and on Skype, X-Zone Radio TV. For more information on the X-Zone Radio TV show with yours truly, Rob McConnell, visit www.xzoneradiotv.com or www.xzonetvchannel.com or simultv.com and xzbn.net. Until next we meet here in the X-Zone from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, always remember X-Zone Nation. Keep your eyes to the sky and your heart in the light. everyone. Jack Ken is our special guest. His website is spiritsofnewengland.org. And Jack, no matter where you've been, anywhere, Canada, the United States, doing paranormal investigations, mm-hmm. based on your expertise, where, in your opinion, has been the most haunted place that you have visited? Oh, really the most? Well, I, 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 would, I would have to. Let me see. I mean, besides uh, the strip. That's part. a good question. Yeah. That's a good question. It was in the U.S., because mm-hmm. I've done more in the U.S. than Canada. Sure. Um, and I would have really probably have to say it was uh, the client home in Springfield, Massachusetts that we did. We experienced everything that that gentleman told us uh, he experienced. Everything. Everything. What did I he, never what, saw anything like it. What did he and, experience? Uh, I, I was, I was uh, grabbed on my calf, uh, which he talked about something grabbing him. Um, we heard disembodied footsteps come right down and a, a woman humming coming down into his apartment area and we had it on camera. Nobody came down. Um, and there was no woman there. There was no woman humming. I saw, I did see a female shadow figure because you could tell the shape it was female less than four feet away from me. And I just watched it fade away. I tried to catch it in my infrared camera and it wouldn't show up there. And I swore because I'm like, son of a, you know, whatever, because it didn't show up in the camera. Mm -hmm. And at that moment, it also captured an EVP, a woman's voice saying, didn't like me. So I think she thought I swore at her, but but we had disembodied voices. We had scratching on the ceiling, which he talked about. We couldn't trace that to, to any animals. We couldn't find anything. Uh, stuff being moved around. We heard things being moved around, which he talked about. Um, yeah, we just pretty much experienced everything he he did, including, like I said, being touched, grabbed. Mm-hmm. Um, it was it was incredible. It was like never anything I'd never ex- experienced before. But you know, you say you've heard you heard things moving around. Did you see things moving around? No, we didn't capture anything, and it was loud too. Yeah. We had cameras in those rooms, and nothing moved. Mm. But it sounded like boxes being moved around. But we captured nothing on the on the DVR cameras, so it was very strange. Uh, and again, that's just, you know, consistent with like what he'd say here: somebody coming down into his uh, apartment in the basement, mm-hmm. and we heard it. Uh, we heard it loud and clear, caught it on the audio, but there's nothing on video of anybody coming down at that exact same time. So we don't know, you know, we know there's spirit there. We know, we think we figured out in the end what was going on. This particular individual was, well, he was facing his mortality and we believe that, uh, some of his family member, as well as some of these spirits from this Bay Pass Cemetery were coming to visit him, and there was a reason for that. Um, Bay Pass Cemetery was a pauper cemetery, and he was he was a nurse. He worked in the new uh, uh, hospital where the old alms house had been built. They built, they knocked it down, they built up the new uh, 
uh, hospital there, which was and it was all right within just a few hundred yards of his home. So we thought, think they were somehow attracted to him, having known him from the hospital, perhaps things like and and but he was experiencing all these crazy things. Um, and we both believe his grandmother was there trying to reach out to him because he had turned to faith, um, getting towards the end, uh, mm-hmm. uh, of, of what he was facing. Um, and his, his grandmother had been a very, uh, a devout Catholic. Um, his brother, we I think was reaching out to him. His brother died in a car accident less than two years earlier. Um, so we think these people were all trying to reach out to him for whatever reasons, but that's the most haunted location I could tell you I ever experienced. Is it still now? I don't know, but it was at the time. Now, when you go into a location like this uh, person's apartment, do you do you do a history background on the residents as well? Do you talk to past people who lived in the same apartment to find out if they experienced anything out of the ordinary? Do you well, check? The, do you check with city engineers? Yeah. Uh, yeah, we we do. We do the research on the history of the home. This is actually his, his mother's home. Mm-hmm. He just had a basement apartment. Right. Um, yeah. So, uh, you know, there was an owner before that. Nobody ever experienced anything there, um, at least that they would talk about. But from what we could get, there's no real – it was a newer home. It was built in the 1970s, and that doesn't necessarily always mean anything either. Uh, his mother was the second owner of it. Um uh, but there was no real history, except with regards to the alms house and the uh, the uh, pauper cemetery, that would lead us to believe anything should be happening there. And again, he lived there for 32 years and never had anything until at this point in his life where he was. Um, I don't want to get into what his his medical problems were, but he was facing his own mortality at this point. Um, was and he that's reti- kind of when it started for him. Was he retired? Did it start uh, when he was retired? He, he's a very, he was actually a young man. He was mm-hmm. actually uh, um, just 33 years old. Right. Um, so, but he had lived a, kind of a tough life, got his life together uh, in later years and became a nurse. Mm-hmm. Um, but he had issues with drug addiction when he was in his teens and stuff like that. And he turned himself around. Um and was able to get himself, you know, this good education, decent job, and then this hit him. Um, and he was never very close to his faith, but he had turned to it in the end. Um, so could that be part of it too? Yeah. I don't know. But um, but, like, but like I asked, you know, did you check with – did you bring in a, a, a building inspector to have the house checked to see if there was a logical explanation for – the paranormal experience. For example, why would somebody use an infrared camera to try and capture a shadow person when? Well, that's what I had on me. I, I, I see. Mean, that, you know, yeah, that's what I was using. Okay. He didn't do that. I, I, you know, when we're investigating. Mm-hmm. We use these infrared cameras or infrared DVR cameras or other types of equipment. So, so sometimes, and I have captured shadow figures in the infrared spectrum of light with these cameras at times. But, ha- but help me understand. Help you, me. You're just trying to capture something, and it's like, yeah, it didn't show up. Okay, so but help like, me understand this. If you're taking, if there's something that is a shadow, it has something has to be blocking a light source. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And it was. This thing was looked solid. It was blocking out. Um, there was a door. I was at. It was standing like at the end of the mm-hmm. couch for me. There was a door on the other side, and I had been right. looking around the room. And then all of a sudden, I look over, and this dark figure is standing there, blocking out the door huh. and the photo that was hanging on the door. Um, so it's like I can't see the door anymore, but I'm seeing this shape of this female figure there. So, and so another thing, it's, it's an absence of light. You're right. It's an absence. Of light now, it's not a completely lit room, right? But you know, it's it's not so dark that you can't see in it either. But you know, I'm like mm-hmm. looking at this thing, and I could see it straight on. Right. I'm not, it's not out of the corner of my eyes. I'm looking at this thing straight on. I actually watched it fade away. Mm-hmm. But I brought the camera over, hoping to capture it in the camera. And when I look down into the camera viewer, it's not there. And I'm looking up at it, and I can see it. So it's one of those deals. But as far as you know, the other stuff you're asking about, the mother, because of the scratching, things like that, the mother had a, a exterminator come in. He couldn't find anything. Um, you know, we talked to her about all that. Uh, we checked with some of the local um, 
uh, City Hall and stuff like that. Is there things in the, there like radon gas, things like that, that be causing issues for people and stuff like that too? There was nothing like that in that area, that particular area. So, you know, and did I check with some of the instruments myself that you could get? No, I didn't. Uh, but we took the word of, you know, the City Hall and stuff like that. Um, so we do some research, you know, right. but I'm trying to figure out what's really going on as far as helping him mostly. Um, and that's part of it too. You're right. Doing that research, checking into it. But, but um, wait, you say you're trying to help him out. How can, you know, like it isn't. Just help. try to figure out what's really happening. Like you're saying, okay. what's really happening. Gotcha. Is it paranormal? Is it not paranormal? Gotcha. Um, a lot of people today are talking about demons. Uh, in all my years doing this show, the word demon has never been used by so many in such a short period of time as is being used yeah, today. What the hell is going on with demons? Yeah, yeah, well, I think it's just uh, it's a, it's a term that's popular in TV because it sounds frightening. Um, I have run into more recently some true demonic things, and uh -huh. that's uh, based on things knowing my given name uh, during investigations and as well as calling out my uh, son's name. Uh, and I kind of dawned on me, I said, is that a threat? And I got a very specific and loud yes from that. And some other things that happened uh, regarding that. Issues, problems I had, you know, even after coming home. Wow. Uh, some physical, some other thing. Those are rare, though. I mean, they are rare. Um, but the D word is thrown around a lot for anything that could be perceived as negative. I say perceived as negative because I've had cases where somebody thought they had a demonic haunting because they're being scratched or this or that. It turns out in those particular cases, um, and this you got to take whether you believe in it or not, it was a friend of theirs who had passed years ago that was trying to convince them to stop doing something they were doing that was illegal. Okay. Um, and they were tough guys in the old days, and they were still tough guys today. That's why he was getting hit, scratched, things knocked out of his hand. In the end, it turned out it seemed like the guy was just trying to tell him, hey, stop doing this. You've got a family now. You shouldn't be getting involved with this type of stuff. Stay away from it. And he he told me that himself later on. He goes, once he stopped doing these certain things, we won't get into what it was, all the activity stopped. Speaking about stopping, Jack, uh, we've run out of time for tonight. I want to thank you so Very much good. for joining us. Great talking to you. And explanation, you. if you'd like more information about Jack and his exploits all over the world, visit his website <laughs> at www.spiritsofnewengland.org. That's www.spiritsofnewengland.org. I'll be back on the other side of this break as we continue here in the X-Zone with yours truly, Rob McConnell, from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, right here on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, Talkstar Radio Network, Mutual Broadcast Network, iHeart Radio, Simul Radio, and Simul TV. Whether you're a skeptic or a believer, join me, Rob McConnell, as together we'll investigate the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology here on the Exxon Radio TV show on XZBN and the Exxon TV channel on Simul TV. Since 1990, the Exxon Radio TV show has been the place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. Together, we'll investigate UFOs, aliens, ghosts, Bigfoot, Psychic phenomena, lake monsters, conspiracy theories, government cover-ups, the truth embargo, alien abductions, ESP, haunted locations from around the world, and so much more. With over 28 years of broadcasting and more than 4,500 individual guests, the Exxon is truly a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality, as evidenced by the credibility, integrity, and professionalism of the guests that we bring to our international audience. If you have seen a UFO, had a close encounter, seen a ghost, Bigfoot, lake monster, or a story that you would like to share or have investigated, contact me, Rob McConnell, by sending me your email to xzone at xzoneradiotv.com or you can call toll-free 1-800-610-7035, extension 143, and on Skype, X-Zone Radio TV. 
For more information on the Exxon Radio TV show with yours truly, Rob McConnell, visit www.exxonradiotv.com or www.exxonetvchannel.com or simultv.com and xzbn.net. Until next we meet here in the X-Zone from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Always remember X-Zone Nation. Keep your eyes to the sky and your heart in the light. You have heard of the X-Zone? Now watch it on Simul TV. Plus 500 video games, live TV channels, free video on demand worldwide and more does this sound like tomorrow's television well it is but you can have it today right now it is simul tv simul tv offers what the others only wish they could provide 15 exclusive channels like exone sci-fi and horror we are worldwide no other provider offers that 500 built-in video games no need to have an extra expensive system we have them included free video on demand live streaming events from around the world, interactive online network, and much more. Tomorrow's TV today, Simul TV. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. You can have Simul TV today. Sign up at simultv.com. Do it today.